halfway through the season and we're closer to fourth from the relegation zone. Albeit, only just. We've survived a mutiny and aggressively retooled the squad in the hope we can avoid the fate that Sampdoria succumbed to in real life. With the midweek game against Salernitana postponed due to a waterlogged pitch, focus turns to the first return fixture of the season against Fiorentina. A win would see Sampdoria jump ahead of Laviolo in the league, and when Tietz gave them the lead 10 minutes in, things were looking rosy. Kuame got a deserved equaliser with only 15 minutes remaining, and then, in the dying seconds, Gonzalo Villar sent the home fans into rapture. A result that catapults Sampdoria into the top half, at least momentarily, as Maurizio Sarri's Lazio arrive in Genoa for the midweek game. Nominative determinism has caught up with their talismanic striker, as Immobile was not fit to start, and that was just the helping hand Sampdoria needed to secure a shock 2-0 win. Sampdoria have done it again. Like Boudicca's sacking of Verulamium, Musterman has inflicted defeat upon those pesky Romans. But how did they do it? It's all about their out-of-possession structure. Oop. While Sampdoria aren't the only team to employ a low block, maintaining a compact shape and restricting passing lanes, where things get interesting is in how they cut the pitch in half to force turnovers. We've got a great example for you here, with Sampdoria having all players behind the ball to force Lazio to go back to the centre-back. As it goes back, just one player engages. Gonzalo Villa waits for Patrick to take his first touch and then presses from the inside, funneling play to the right. With few options now available and too much risk should he get caught in possession, he has to go long, giving Sampdoria back the ball. And if we take a look at the touches in the penalty area, we can see how this stagnated Lazio's attack. Just seven touches, two of which were headers from set pieces in the last ten minutes. But keeping the opposition at bay is just half the battle. To win, Sampdoria needed to score themselves, and this is where the magic happens. And by magic, I mean luck. Both goals owed a lot to kind ricochets and deflections, putting the ball into the path of a Sampdoria player. So there you have it. A little bit of luck. A lot of bit of oop. The Fito Football Show is brought to you by The Lethargic. The Lethargic provide dedicated coverage to every football team to have ever existed, until it is no longer convenient to do so, at which point we'll drop them at the earliest opportunity. And you can enjoy this ever-diminishing service with a free 7-second trial. Just use the code FITO. The win didn't come without cost, however, as Abdelhamid Sabiri pulled the ligaments in his right knee and was set to miss the next two weeks. Next up, two Calcio, both alike in dignity, in fair Verona where we lay our scene. From clumsy hack break tie with penalty, where civil blood makes keeper gloves unclean. From the fatal foul of these two foes, a Baldini cross Ferrari take flight. Then misadventured piteous overthrows do with their death a Durich counter-strike. The fearful passage of a momentum's groove and the continuance of Verona's rage, which, but their players end, naught could be moved. And now for Durichich to take the stage. To which, if you with patient ears attend, the crowd fell silent. Sampdoria ascent. Three consecutive wins for the first time this season, and perhaps more significantly, a convincing performance against lesser opposition. Which can't be said for the next game, against league leaders Internationale. An early Gagliardini red card that was more intent than contact was quickly followed by Juricic's opener. But, in the dying minutes, a defensive dereliction of duty allowed Mkhitaryan in to equalise. A point before the game would have been considered a great result, but ultimately this felt like a missed opportunity. Another away game followed, this time against Udinese, where a similar story unfolded. It took Tietz only 21 seconds to open the scoring, pouncing on a weird bubble for his fourth Sampdoria goal. Udinese applied pressure throughout and eventually levelled early in the second half through Dulafeo. A six-game unbeaten run which put Sampdoria on 36 points, which, based on averages over the last 10 seasons, would be enough for survival. The rearranged Salernitana fixture next, a seven-hour journey for Salernitana fans on a Wednesday evening, only for it to be postponed once again five minutes before kickoff. And so attention turns to the other Claret site, Torino. Listed as a historic rivalry, there seems to be little written about it in English media, beyond both cities being in the northwest of Italy. Nonetheless, we'll treat it with the ferocity it deserves. 
Masterman has rung the changes after Sampdoria's draw with Udinese. Ferrari, Amione, Winks and Baldini drop to the bench. Murillo, Orgello, Villa and Mihaila start. Milinkovic Savic is nursing a thigh injury for Torino, so Edric Berisha is making his first start of the season. Sampdoria bossing the opening exchanges here. Juricic has sprung free down the right. Tiet gathers it in. And go, 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 go. Served it up on an anti pasto board. Sampdoria are toying with Torino here like a cat with a dead mouse's carcass. Tap it with the right ball, slap it with the left. Bad cat. Oh, Mihaila's free, and that could have been a goal. Is it time to get rid of throw ins? Arsene Wenger reckons so. Well, what do you think of that, Arsene? Big Philly team makes it 2 0 and shows you why you should never ask a Frenchman their opinion on football. A win that closes the gap to their supposed rivals, who currently occupy the final European slot to just three points. But good things don't last forever. A succession of injuries in the run-up to the Bologna game were only topped by the re-emergence of a familiar story, the Orgello impasse. It was not enough to derail momentum, however, as Tietz's ninth-minute volley sealed the win. With rain forecast for midweek, you could forgive Salernitana for their trepidation ahead of the next game. 309 fans made the journey, and at the third time of asking, the game went ahead. Whilst tensions remain off the pitch, Ogello is still a central part of Musterman's plans, as he set up Florenzi for both goals. The first, a delightful left foot volley, the second swept in beautifully with his right. With the unbeaten run extended to nine games, Sampdoria were now up to seventh. But before we can get carried away, a trip to Naples beckons. With only six minutes gone, Winks fed Sabiri to set Sampdoria up for yet another shock. Before the half was through, however, Naples had turned things around. Jesus has risen, more specifically at the far post, before Lubotka fired in a second from just inside the area. With 10 minutes remaining, Lozano served up this absolute bit of filth as Kvaratskhelia wrapped up the win. A fair result and one that ends the unbeaten run just before it can reach double figures. An international break gives time to regroup and prepare for a trip to Cremonese. Philip Tietz has been an absolute revelation since joining in January. Two goals in the first half sent him to the top of Sampdoria's goal-scoring chart, with eight in 12 appearances. Jason Murillo decided to make things a bit more competitive by gently nursing the ball into his own goal before Quagliarella's 95th minute penalty sealed the win. Professional football is nothing but a hotbed of cliches, and so it only seems right that Mustman claimed the new unbeaten run starts here. To keep it up, they'll have to beat Atalanta. Ordero starts despite nursing a groin injury, and you can't help but wonder if that somehow inhibited him as he swatted Coop Miner's long-range effort into his goal. Atalanta became the first team to complete a double over Sampdoria, and so a new unbeaten run maybe starts now instead. Lecce are the visitors who had ground out a nil-nil draw the last time these two met. Not quite so resilient this time, however, as Tietz gets yet another goal after Mihaila's pass somehow made its way through to him. Alex Ferrari doubled the lead early in the second half, and that was enough to seal the win. Idris Torre picked up his 10th yellow card of the season, resulting in a one-match ban, whilst Odero suffered a thigh injury ruling both out for the upcoming tie against Spezia. As derbies often are, it was a cagey affair, settled by a single goal. Right back Emil Holm charging from deep to meet Wrecker's cross. Despite the rivalry, the fans seem surprisingly sanguine about what is arguably Sampdoria's worst result of the season. A trip to the San Siro next, against second place AC Milan. Torre and Ordero returned, but Alex Ferrari and Tietz were unavailable through injury. Raheem Diaz gave Milan the lead just 15 minutes in, but Sampdoria did not capitulate. With four minutes remaining, Baldini's low cross found Quagliarella, and the 40-year-old legend secured a much-deserved draw. And with that, a stuttering April came to an end. Beyond even the wildest expectations, Sampdoria sit in eighth position, just two points off the final European spot. With six games remaining, the scope of this challenge has firmly changed. Home ties against Roma and Juventus are the obvious obstacles, but the following fixtures feature three teams all fighting for their lives. 
Can we really secure European football? I suppose we'll have to wait until next week to find out. <laughs>